科技临界点，向世界介绍中国科技。Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China. Today, we are going to share some exciting tech innovations and announcements that happened in China last week. On October the 17th, the U.S. Commerce Department announced new restrictions on exporting cutting-edge AI chips in order to prevent China from acquiring sophisticated semiconductors and making quote breakthroughs in artificial intelligence and supercomputing. The ban will take effect in 30 days. This severely constrains Nvidia and other chip makers from selling high-performance semiconductors to China. It is also increasingly difficult for companies to find workarounds to bypass these restrictions. Four Chinese tech giants already engaged in the AI race: graphic processing units (GPUs) from companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Intel have become indispensable for training large AI models. According to reports, Nvidia relies on China for up to 25% of its data center chip revenue. Its share price, along with AMD and Intel, plunged after announcement of the new rules. After last year's restrictions were announced, Nvidia designed special low-performance GPUs for China, the H800 and A800 series, that skirted the performance threshold set by the U.S. government while retaining enough power to train AI models. Well, most of these are now also banned. Additionally, Intel's Gaudi 2 AI accelerator chip is also affected by the new restrictions. Even the new high-end RTX 4090 graphics card will require additional licensing for export to China. Last year's rules prohibited exporting chips above two threshold, a power threshold that determined the chip's compute capabilities and a threshold for inter-chip communication speed. Now, the Commerce Department will replace the latter with a measure called performance density. Specifically designed to prevent workaround. For example, Chiplet allows smaller chip components to be connected and form a complete chip. And the U.S. is concerned that the Chinese firm could acquire Chiplet and secretly assemble them into larger chips that violates the restrictions. The updated rules expand restrictions on exporting chip-making tools and equipment to China. Certain Chinese companies were added to Washington's entity list. A list that already includes major Chinese companies like Huawei and top memory chip maker like Yangzi Memory. This time, they added companies like Biren and Morse Threads. Well, Biren and Morse Threads focus on designing GPUs and are considered to be the top candidates for producing domestic alternatives to Nvidia chips in China. These chips are needed to train algorithms that power AI-based services similar to ChatGPT. With the new restrictions, Biren and Morse Red will now face plunging demand and slow technological development. Experts says that this could affect the normal operation of their businesses. With U.S. chips now banned in China, industry experts believe that Chinese firms will have to strive to fill the void by developing homegrown solutions. U.S. chip companies strongly resent that bans could spur the development of an ecosystem led by competitors. In other words, blocking access would accelerate the growth of Chinese domestic chip industry. Given the current geopolitical economy, Chinese startups and industries have no choice but to conduct independent research on architectures and ecosystems synchronized with domestic EDA design tools and mature foundry process. Ultimately, this solution benefits Chinese firms like Huawei while putting multinationals like Nvidia at a disadvantage. Chinese scientists have bold plans to build a huge underwater telescope to detect neutrinos, ghostly particles that can reveal the secrets of the universe. It is a project called Trident, and it aims to build the world's biggest neutrino detector by 2030. Neutrinos are subatomic particles with no charge and almost zero mass. They are produced in cosmic events like exploding stars and black holes. Neutrinos can travel across space unaffected by magnetic fields or matter. They can point back to cosmic ray sources. So the new telescope will act as a neutrino lens to peer into the universe. But why build this telescope on the water? 
giant detectors in very quiet environment are needed to capture rare neutrino interactions. On land, Cosmo ray detectors suffer as too much interference to capture them. But with the depths of the seawater and its darkness, the quietness, it allows neutrinos to be detected as they collide with water molecules in a flash of light. Existing neutrino telescopes are in Antarctica, the Mediterranean, and Russia. Trident will be in the South China Sea. The development is led by Shanghai Jiaotong University. The telescope will have 10,000 times the sensibility of the Ice Cube telescope in Antarctica, spanning 4 km on the seafloor at a depth of 3 km. This underwater behemoth will complement other neutrino telescopes worldwide. Trident will use Earth itself as a shield to spot neutrinos coming through the planet. As Earth rotates daily, Trident can scan the entire sky without any blind spots. Deploying and operating Trident's massive array deep in the ocean presents huge engineering challenges. Thousands of vertical strings of light sensors must be positioned on the seafloor and connected to power and data transmission infrastructure. If succeeded, it will open a new window into the extreme universe and fundamental physics. Extreme weather events like typhoon are changing in dangerous ways. Over the past decade, typhoons have grown stronger overall, with more super typhoons hitting earlier each year. Chinese and American scientists have teamed up to study this trend using the latest weather data and the climate models. Their research revealed that super typhoons worldwide are occurring significantly earlier in the year, driven mostly by global warming. Historically, autumn has the highest frequency of super typhoons, but more recently, more and more are forming in summertime, like super typhoon Doxuri in July this year. The researchers warned this increase in the risk of compound disasters when super typhoons collide with extreme monsoons. These combined disasters cause damage far beyond any single event, severely challenging preparedness. The seasonal shift was only detected in super typhoons. Weak typhoons showed no change in timing. This contrast offered clues to why super typhoons are moving up. Rapid intensification is the key process distinguishing super typhoons. They typically undergo at least one period of explosive strengthening with winds increasing over 50 miles per hour in 24 hours. Data analysis confirmed similar seasonal shift in rapid intensification events. The team analyzed seasonal verifications in atmospheric and oceanic factors influencing typhoon intensification. While atmospheric conditions showed no clear changes, ocean factors displayed pronounced seasonal shifts. Attribution studies using the latest climate models suggest human greenhouse emissions are the primary driver of the shifts. The evidence is clear climate change is an urgent global issue. The super typhoon trends are a warning that cannot be ignored and our future depends on how quickly we respond. And that is all for today's Threshold. We hope you like this new section on science and technology in China. As usual, we welcome your feedback and thoughts.